Paul Kurt Sasser here from TGT Web Comics with C2E2 with Phil Kahn from Gilded Age. How are you doing today, Phil? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. Love the shirt. The shirt is what drew me to this table. You know, achievement hunters beware. <laughs> <laughs> what I like to say is that if being a douchebag earns you achievement points, then I have 1,735 achievement points. You, sir, are the king. I am the king of douchebags. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. <laughs> I'm glad I said it and not you. <laughs> well, exactly. I was kind of hoping you'd say it. But anyhow, <laughs> Gilded Age is a great new comic, you know, with, with T, with Erica. We're going to get you all, all you guys about this. But tell us what Gilded Age is truly all about. Gilded Age, uh, as I see it, is... I've had a big problem with fantasy for a long time uh, because a lot of the same things happen in every fantasy story you ever see. Like, there's always a one prophesied hero of legend that shows up that's like, oh, I can't handle the burden of being a hero. And you know, elves are always regarded as like the most elegant, best people on the planet, and I just wanted to take them down a peg. And dwarves and humans are always super best friends. I wanted to see what well, I want to see a conflict between humans and dwarves. Why, why can't they be enemies? And so I'm just basically taking everything that I've seen, I, that I perceive as, uh, you know, standard reused tropes about fantasy stories, and just change them in the way, things that I like. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just writing the fantasy story I want to read. That's what it comes down to. Tell me about the mage aspect then. Tell me, are they like the whole super powerful, but fall asleep after a few spells type deal? The mages in our story? Um, well, spell casting is a really important concept in the story because the other idea we had going in was we wanted to write a story about uh, the era in which technology renders magic obsolete, which is why we came up with the title Gilded Age, so it could be a pun on both, you know, the MMO influence as, long, as well as the, the story is going on in the game. Um, so wizards are becoming more uncommon, except for, you know, the Sky Elves magical city of Ensala and Kulara. I literally made up the name of that city while I was writing the script because I just went like, how many syllables? <laughs> Can I think of a dude guy? <laughs> exactly. Um, mostly just because, you know, all those elven cities have such long, ridiculously silly names. I just wanted to go further. Uh, but they're a society that exists based around magic, and then the humans are a society that doesn't really have much magic. So, and I wanted to show this example of the haves and the have nots, you know, illustrated in terms of who has magic who doesn't have magic, and then it's becoming who has technology and who doesn't have technology because what need do humans have for fireballs and water walking when we have explosives and boats? Best of both worlds. I mean, this this reminds me of an old game I used to play called um, uh, uh, Arcana. I, I believe the game was called Arcana. It was a PC-based game that had both magic and fantasy and magic and technology in it. And you could kind of ride the wave, or you could go either or, pretty hardcore. But I love the fact that you're taking it to a whole another level. You're not just you, you know you're doing like I said, it's a story you want to read and write, and it's a story that you know a lot of us that think, well, why are so agile and pointy-eared and all that stuff. They got a trip every so often. Well, for me, my biggest question is why does everyone keep putting up with elves bullshit? <laughs> It's like, you know, they, they come out and they say, we're better than you, and then everyone's like, yeah. So I'm just like, well, no, don't take that. Like, no, you're the asshole, man. So, I mean, think about humans. If, like, the other species was like, you know, we're better than you, do you think humans or Americans especially would be like, would it sit down for that? I don't think so. So, you know, that's where I wanted to go with that. The, human, the humans are an America allegory. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and I bought a shirt for that just because, and that's part of our segment on the podcast too, but uh, <laughs> it's a perfect segue into, you know, C2E2 is this inaugural convention, you know, you got a great group of people, Erica, T, and you're doing what you love, which is make comics, you know. How do you find this convention in terms of in terms of your distribution or, or your actual display? Um, we've had a pretty good day so far. Uh, the traffic's been good, and in, in you know the highlight area of Web Comics Pavilion, or you know the what we call consider the uh, the best part. You know we're right smack dab in the middle of it. Um, we've been getting a lot of people that don't read the comic to buy the stuff. We've been getting a lot of people who do read the, the comic to buy the stuff. So. Um, um, all, 
overall, I'm getting. I'm overall, I'm very satisfied with how we've been. I'm not like you know exuberantly. Oh man, this is the best con I've ever done. But uh, I'm very happy with how we performed so far, and uh, hopefully we'll move we'll move some more product tomorrow, and you know meet some more fans. And I mean that's the best part is meeting people who come up. We're so young. We're such a young comic. We've only been around for like six months. So to have someone come up and go like, yeah, I, I love your comic. Read it. It's it's really it hits you here. And it's like man, we're on the right track. That's great stuff. And and one final question before I move on to your other cohort here in Erica. You know, I asked this at T, but when everything closes up, what personal experiences do you want to take from this to share with others? Oh, to share with others? Oh. Because I was going to say rolling in a pile of money. Well, I can't really share that with others. You could, but it The... The experience I want to share with others about this convention is just the magic you feel when uh, someone comes up and says, you know, you're so funny, or your, your story's so great, I'm hooked, or someone's like, you know, what's Gilded Age? Even that's fine, too, because then they could be someone who wants to be rereading it. So you hand them, a, you hand them a, a flyer card, and you're just like, here, take a look, and they look at it, and then they go, hey, he's right, this is the best comic I've ever read. I should have listened to him the first time. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot, Phil. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, and I'll move on to Erica. But, uh, and uh, what's the website for Gilded Age? That is gildedage.net. G-O-I-L-D-E-D-N-A-G-E dot N-E-T. Whatever. Gildedage.net. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Phil. Appreciate it. Thank you.